So today we're going to be talking about matter and we're also going to touch upon um, significant figures. So we'll talk about that later on in the video. Just a heads up, a lot of the examples that I'll be using today are from the textbook Chemistry and Molecular Approach, and it's written by Navalzo, the fourth edition. So that's just a reference if you guys want to look up the textbooks and see the questions that I'm referring to. Okay, so when we're talking about matter, we know that atoms and molecules, they make up matter. Okay, we also know that matter is divided into two categories. The state of matter and the composition of matter. So when we we're referring to the state of matter, we're talking about the three states of an object. That can be the solid state, the liquid state, and the gaseous state. On the other hand, when we're referring to composition of matter, we are referring to the components that make the object. We're referring to the, co the components that make up that object. So composition itself is divided into two categories, pure and mixtures. So when matter is pure, that means that it can either be an element or it can be a compound. So if you have an element that can either be, you know, sodium, phosphorus, hydrogen, all of that. A compound, for instance, can be water, H2O. It's made up, the, it's made up of more than one element. On the other hand, when we're talking about mixtures, mixtures are also divided into two categories. A homogeneous mixture. and a heterogeneous mixture. So a common example that I like to use when I'm explaining mixtures is, for instance, a bowl of chicken noodle soup, for instance. So in a bowl of chicken noodle soup, you have both the chicken, both the noodles, and the soup. You realize that there are various components within that bowl of soup. That's what we refer to as a heterogeneous mixture. A homogeneous mixture is something that's uniform throughout. For instance, when we're drinking a cup of tea, you can't see the sugar molecules floating. It's uniform throughout. And that's what we refer to as a homogeneous mixture. Now, something to note is that both compounds and mixtures contain different types of atoms. However, in a compound, the atoms combine, combine in fixed definite proportions. You can have a one-to-one -one ratio versus in a heterogeneous mixture and mixtures in general, you can have different proportions. So another characteristic to consider when we're talking about matter is how it behaves, how it change form. So there are two important characteristics that we should refer, that we should talk about when referring to matter. So matter can undergo, number one, physical changes. It can also undergo chemical changes. So let's talk about a few examples that include physical changes and chemical changes. For instance, let's talk about water. When water is frozen, it changes its state, as we mentioned before, from a liquid to a solid. We know that during warm temperatures, that solid or that ice can turn back into its liquid form. So something to note with physical changes is that they are reversible. As you've realized, it's very easy to go from a glass of water to a, to a few cubes of ice and vice versa. However, when we're talking about chemical changes, here's where the difference comes in. For instance, when we are cooking an egg, after the egg is liquidy, but once you put it on a pan, 
it changes. It changes in a way that its composition changes. The components that made it up have changed with the addition of heat. Now, the chemical changes, they are irreversible. You can't go back into its initial state. Okay, so now that we've introduced the concept of matter, now we can start talking about significant figures. So pretty much to understand significant figures, we need to understand that whenever we're making a measurement, it's subject to some type of error or some type of uncertainty because there's always a limit to the precision of any instrument that we use. So when we're talking about significant figures, you can make an estimate by you know rounding to the 100th place to the 10th place and etc so here are a few examples 0 0.006 it's important to know that when we're talking about significant figures the first zeros never count as a part of that number in other words in this number there's only one significant figure Let's give us another example. 2.34. There's one, two, three, three significant figures. Let's have another example. 6.020. Now here's the thing. Another thing about significant figures is that if you have a zero that ends the number, then that's going to be included in the count. So in this number, there's exactly five significant figures. However, what happens if I ask something like this? How many significant figures are in the number seven? What we see here is known as an exact number. Now, an exact number, it's pretty much saying that there there's no uncertainty in that number, that this number is 100% exact, that we are 100% sure, that we are 100% precise. However, we know in reality that that never exists. So, what are some conditions that make a number exact in particular? For instance, the conditions. Number one, accurate counting things to be objects. So if you're counting pencils, for instance, there's going to be exactly five pencils or six pencils. You are 100% precise. Another condition that falls under exact numbers is defined quantities. So when we're talking about defined quantities, we are talking about conversions, for instance. For instance, 100 centimeters is equal to exactly one meter. Another, again, another exact quantity. In third, integral numbers that are part of an equation. So what does this mean? Equation that includes most equations are going to be are going to include exact numbers. For instance, we let the radius is equal to i over two. This is two exact number. So now we're going to be talking about the different rules that are accompanied when adding or multiplying significant numbers. Okay, so first of all, when it comes to multiplying or dividing significant numbers, 
factors, the result carries the same number of significant figures as the factor with the fewest significant figures. For instance, if we are multiplying the numbers 1.052, times 0.53. First of all, I'll identify how many significant numbers are in each number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, four here. And we have two significant figures here. Multiplying or identifying significant figures, the number is going to carry the number of sig figs with the one that contains the smallest amount of decimals or in other words, not particular decimal specific. So this one has two six weeks, this one has four. So if our answer is 0 0.55756, then this answer can do significant figures. So this answer can be 0 0.56. For multiplying or dividing. Okay. So that's the first one. When we're adding or subtracting, the result carries the same number of decimal places as the quantity of decimal places. Now, here's the difference. We're adding or multiplying or dividing. The number of significant figure product or quotient is dependent on the number of significant figures of individual variables. So this one has four significant figures. This one has two significant figures. However, when we're adding or subtracting, we need to look at the number of decimal places of each number and see which number has the fewest number of decimal places. And so the answer is going to be. So, say we are adding these two numbers 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, we're looking at how many significant figures there are for each and other. Other looking at this, this is three. This is number two small pieces. There has four decimal pieces. So, the decimal places does not equal the Because when we're talking about the whole, so this is one number we go back to numbers with three decimal places. Two significant figure places that happen, but just understand that there's a there's a big difference when you're considering the two, and, and that differentiates the whole difference between multiplying and dividing versus adding and subtracting. And dividing, you need to look at all the significant figures as a whole. Adding subtracting, you need to look at the decimal places. So we can the decimal. So if I were to write my answer, I would get So, because our entity, I, I think, the example of rounding significant figures, I wish you to round each significant figure. So we have five of them. 
think again. You know, first bigger. If you give this one to two, the B. This number if you like. What about this? So if I want to round it up. Find your own.